Then get one without. Let's go down to business. <laughs> To defeat. <laughs> the <laughs> we need One of my favorite songs in Disney. Um, okay, so welcome to our third episode of Let's Talk More Talk. I am Christina. I'm Leanne. And Megan. And today we have a very special guest, our CrossFit box owner, Arnell. Welcome. Hi. Thank you guys for Thank having you me. For I'm very honored here. to be here. Been listening to you guys and be like, wow, this is awesome. This is great. <laughs> We're very excited to have you on. Mm. Yes. I'm excited to be here. Did you have any like, um, were you like, um, I don't know if I want to be on this? No. No? Just all. like you were like, yes, I'm in. Not at all. This is, this is good stuff. <laughs> good. Glad to hear it. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about, um, well, we first want to like let everybody know like how you became a CrossFit owner, like what made you decide to go from, you know, where you were to <clears throat> where you're at now. So. Wow. Okay. Well, where should I start? Um, start at the beginning. Like, what made you become? Start at the beginning. Yeah, oh, what made wow. you decide to switch from what you were I was born uh, in a lawyer? <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, so I was uh, I was a practicing attorney. I, I had my own law firm at the time, and I was going to and from different courthouses, pretty much every day. I mean, I'd, I'd be all over the place, and every time I would have a break in between courthouses, I'd go to like the nearest public library. And I just, you know, get on my computer and do my computer work. And then when I had nothing else to do, I'd go and I'd research uh, different workout regimens. And back at the time, I'd be working out, you know, at a big, at this big box global gym, and uh, just doing the same stuff over. But I needed something different, so I was researching all these things. And I, once in a while, I come across this, come across this website, CrossFit.com, and. Uh, and I'd look at the workouts, what they do and everything. And it was so different, so radically different. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no bright pictures. There was no like, you know, like, you know, like really good photography with lighting and everything. It was just plain pictures of people working out. Mm -hmm. And the first workout that I saw was Angie. And that's four time, 100 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 Ouch. squats. Yep. And I look at it, I'm like, who does this? <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid. And then I'm like, let's go to the next one. Oh, here we go. Muscle and fitness. All right, awesome. You know, online magazine. And so, and everything. And then, you know, I, I do the workouts and everything. And then, like, six months later, I came across CrossFit.com again. I'm like, oh, these crazy people again. <laughs> Let's see what they're doing today. Why? Why? You know, I'm like, you know, I'd be like, these. And then, and, uh, so, like, it took me about a year. And I'd come across the, the website. And, after, and I would, like, search through the website. And, you know what? I'm like, hey, you know, there might be something to this. Let's, let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. So I did one of the workouts in my living room. While watching the 5:30 a.m. news, what was workout? It, Angie? it was Elizabeth. Elizabeth, October 28. What's Elizabeth for Elizabeth. everybody else? Okay, so Elizabeth know. is a is a um, is a uh, benchmark workout, and it, it basically it's given a name. A benchmark workouts are given a name so that we can you, you can identify it and you can repeat it late, uh, periodically. So Elizabeth basically is 21 cleans. And then 21 ring dips, and then 15 cleans and 15 ring mm -hmm. dips, nine cleans, nine ring dips for time. That means you time yourself um, to see how long it takes you to do. So I was doing this um, um, on October 28, 2008. I remember this very distinctly. I was watching the 5:30 a.m. news, and so um, I had a, 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 a bar, just a standard bar in my in my house, and I think I did 65 pounds on the bar. And for dips, I did dips in between two chairs. Mm -hmm. So. I did the 21 cleans. I, I had to research what cleans were because I didn't know what they were. And did I, you just, fall off the chairs? Like, no, how to keep them almost, down? I, no, I just, I just put, them next, I put them right next to each were other. Were they like know, lower just, chairs? Yeah, they were, they, okay. were like, they were like, you know, like dining room chairs. Gotcha. So I put them next to each other and um, I had put my hands on the seats and I was just doing the dips mm -hmm. in between the chairs. So I did it. I did the 21 cleans and then 21 dips and then 15 cleans, 15 dips, 9 cleans, 9 dips. And it took me about 11 minutes to do. And after I was done... I, f I was like laying down on the ground, like dying, mm -hmm. like my heart was racing. It felt like my, my heart was about to explode. And I'm like, I'm breathing really hard. I'm like, wow, 
why? You know, why am I feeling like <laughs> this? This is like, you know, this is not unlike any other feeling I ever had during a workout. You know, after yeah. a workout, I, I'm done. Like, yeah, that was good. Good sweat. You know, awesome. Cool. Mm. Let's go do the next thing. Yeah. So, and uh, ever since that day, I got, uh, um, I came to realize that, uh, you know, maybe I should do something different because I'm not as fit as I thought I was. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And so then what was next? You started. You started <laughs> so, yeah. So then I logged, uh, I, well, I logged that down in my in my book and then the next day i'm like you know what let's do the next workout of the day on uh, on crossfit.com so i'd go to the website every day mm -hmm. and i would see what the workout of the day was on my phone and like every morning i'd wake up i'd look at my oh okay let's do that i can't remember what the next workout was because I just, everything was a blur since yeah then. but i would do each workout of the day and, and i'd be doing them in my in my living room for like maybe a year and then i realized that you know what maybe i should you know maybe you know because I, I saw these other people who do doing CrossFit workouts and they, they had their garage gym. So I'm like, hey, I want to have a garage gym because, you know, I want to be like everyone else. <laughs> this is cool. So then I, I, told, I told my wife, Mick, I'm like, hey, we're going to move the cars out of the garage and we're going to make that a garage. She's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they're going to be in the, their driveway. We'll be okay. She's like, all right. And so I did. I, I went to, uh, I, I bought my own, all my equipment. I went to Blaine's Farmer Fleet. I got four cow mats. You know, and they're like six Those feet. Those like big horse mats. Yeah, basically six feet. Good for feet crossfitters by, yeah. and good yes, for cows. Exactly. <laughs> right. They're about inch, an inch thick, and they're six feet long by four feet wide. And I had four of them, and that basically, and I, that, that fit in my garage. And then I also bought, I bought a um, thing called, it was called a stud bar at the time. That's what they call it, the stud bar, because it's a, it was a pull-up bar that you could install into the studs of your wall yeah. to make it secure. Mm -hmm. So I got a pull-up bar there, and I got two rings. I can't remember where I got them from. I couldn't, yeah. There was no Rogue Fitness at the time. Yeah. So you had to go search yeah. to find. And what else? And, and I got a bar. I got some, I got a kettlebell from Play It Against Sports. So that, I built my, my own um, my own gym in the, in the garage, and I started doing CrossFit.com workouts from there for about two years. I did that. Oh, wow. And then yeah. others joined you in your garage? No, nobody yeah. actually joined me, no, because then I was doing, and uh, and then uh, I decided, you know what, hey, and uh, I, maybe I could, you know, get my trainer certification and, and see what happens from there. And so I did. I got my trainer cert, my L1, level one trainer cert. And then, then I decided, hey, maybe I should, you know, train some people in my garage and see if this goes anywhere. So I went on Facebook and I started posting like, hey, I opened up my, my own garage gym. I'm doing this thing called CrossFit. It's like really cool. It's like you know, <laughs> different different movements. It's nothing like you've ever done before. It's really intense. You know, you get a good workout. People are like, yeah, that's cool. Awesome. But you live like, you know, three hours away from me. I'm like, oh, that's okay. And then, and then I had a couple of people who responded. And so we all met. Here's another date on November 6th. It was like yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, yeah, that was yesterday. November 6th, 2010. You and your crazy yes, ideas. I, I remember. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> literally. And I had one, two, three. Brian Armand, this other guy. Uh, sheesh, I can't remember these other, the other, these other two guys. They all came from all over the, you know, the Chicagoland area to meet me at my gym. And we did a workout there. And they liked it. It was cool. And... Um, and just went it came it went went from there. So how did you get like your first like members of Oh your gosh, home well gym? I then I, then I realized, hey, maybe I can, you know, open up a gym, you know, and this I can make this a thing. So then a, I um and at that time too, I was, you know, I was already uh, practicing as an attorney for 8 years and I wanted to get out because, you know, just being an attorney was just uh, was just a little just too much. Yeah. yeah. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. too you much. hear that a lot though with attorneys. Yeah, a lot like attorney, it's a lot. It's a lot of it's a lot of, there's a lot of burnout, a lot yeah. of like a lot of very a lot you go in there with bright ambitions, like you're gonna change the world, yep. you're, gonna, you're gonna do good and all this stuff, and you realize that you know what? The world's not gonna change. Yeah. No matter what you do. But yeah. you're still changing people's yeah, so, worlds. Right, exactly. You, you just chose a different route a different to do way. that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So then yeah, so then I'm like, you know what, this might be my way out. And so then I, I told uh, some, I told some people uh, that hey, if you want to uh, join me and work out in my gym, uh, I will train you for free, mm. so that I will get experience, and in return, if you stick with me and I actually open up a gym, you are gonna get a free lifetime membership. Oh wow! Wow! And that that and I actually th with those five, I had I had five original members. And, uh, and actually only one of them to this day actually has that free lifetime membership, Jill. Yeah. Oh, and she's oh, yeah. Bam. She's she, bam. She, 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 I just met Jill. Yeah. She, she mm -hmm. trained with us for about two years and then she stopped for some reason. I can't remember. Then she came back for another two years after that, I think like four years ago mm -hmm. and then she stopped she and now she's back again. Mm -hmm. 
That's so, awesome. And she's like, yeah, so is that membership still? I'm like, yeah, it's still good. <laughs> so, so what date did you open Caliber? Mm. The official date was April 11, 2011. Yeah. Yes. For 11, 11. And how many members did you have when you first opened? Five. The five, five members? Well, because out those five members, we I had them in my gym, in my garage gym. And um, and and as soon as I, 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 I got the lease on the, um, the warehouse where we have the gym now, I told them, hey, we're moving all the stuff out of my garage gym into a real, you know, a bigger space. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. It's, uh, and so that's the original, the space we're in now is your original yes, space? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So. Yeah. Very cool. So when you opened Caliber, like as far as programming went, like how did you go about that? Did you kind of follow? I still followed the uh, CrossFit.com programming. Uh, oh, okay. when I first opened when I first opened and then as soon as uh, I got more members I started realizing hey you know what members have different goals they have you know some some, some members want to lose weight others want to get you know they want to acquire new skills like you know muscle ups and pull ups and you know handstand push ups and uh, and others they want to just you know they just want to stay fit they want they want to be healthier mm -hmm. and so then I decided that I'm going to follow crossfit.com but then um, uh, with, with these new members that I have, I'm, I'm going to um, tailor the workouts to their needs. And so slowly I evolved from doing CrossFit.com workouts to my own pro program Very based cool. on what they needed. So Did, Is that when you developed your spreadsheet that yes, you gave exactly, us a little glimpse exactly. of? Well, no, not really, actually. No, I didn't develop that until after my level two. Because oh, in okay. the level two, that's what they showed you how to use, how to program. Um, and they had a little system where you had to use a spreadsheet. And uh, it's it's very complicated, but it's also very simple. It's hard to explain. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> you do need so. a whole another episode for that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and if you guys want to, I could sit down with you for an hour and show you how it's done. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I so. mean, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Careful, what you all those secrets. <laughs> yeah, because they touch a little bit on the uh, programming on the L one, right? But they, they don't go into too much depth. They just mm. say, okay, these are the main. The main movements are like the main, the uh -huh. three weightlifting, monostructural, and gymnastics. And then of these three categories, there's subtypes of each, right? But, and they say like, you want to mix it up. You want to yeah. mix up between those three varieties mm -hmm. throughout the week. But they right. really, that's all they say. Yeah. They don't right. really elaborate too much more right. on it. So yeah. the programming in L2 would be very fascinating to. Yeah, it is. It is it's really cool. And they, and they, they also said too, in the L2, which is, which, which was, um, Funny because it, it was in a lot, aligned with I thought too. They said, "You're gonna program when you program for your gym. Program for your members. Mm -hmm. Don't think about the whole world. Don't think about mm -hmm. you know how everybody perceives you. Think about your own little world, your members, and think about what they need, what they can do, what they can't do. Um, so, for instance, if you have if you have a member who can do, you, you want to program for your for your elite members. Put it that way. Program for your elite members, and then everybody else scales." Okay. okay, so you have to figure out what your elite members can do, and then you program it for them. Okay. And then go from there. Yeah. That makes sense. So do you think tailoring the program like that, it, programming like that, is something that allows you to build? Like, you're so good at building a good community. Like, people come to Caliber and you leave with friends. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's something right. you're really good at. Yeah. Do you think, like, by tailoring your programming, that helps build that community? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because then, you know, it, it, uh, everybody sort of has, like, a... Um, a camaraderie they, they all they all um, feel like they accomplished something yeah it feels you know like so. if you give if you give people you know ring handstand push-ups and you know a bunch of stuff they can't do like oh, I don't know. yeah it's gonna why make you, them why don't you program wanna... this none of us yeah. can do this right yeah. <laughs> but yeah but if if you program something that i would say mostly everyone can do and then and then everyone else can scale um, like like i would say not everyone but like maybe like the top the elite people can do and everyone can scale then you know it's like Everyone has something that they, they can work for, right. work toward. Like, for instance, in the beginning, I never programmed muscle-ups. I never programmed overhead squats because no one could do more than 45-pound overhead squats. Yeah. And we did do overhead squats uh, in the beginning, like in the first within the first eight months, but they were PVC pipes. Yeah. And, I mean, it was, uh, it was very hard for people to do overhead squats back then. So I never did anything more than a 45-pound overhead squat for mm -hmm. people. But then once people started building up their, their uh, flexibility and their coordination, to do uh, overhead squats, then I started increasing the weight. 
Yeah. Right? I mean, you saw the same exact thing happen at the CrossFit Games, right? So it's like yeah. the programming's involved so much and like you've had to right. kind of do the same thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so like when you have like newer people like now, like you have new people come in who are not as, you know, um, athletic or fit or whatever, like do you also change your programming for those newer people so that no. they don't feel like they're coming in and they can't do something that well no I, I keep the programming the same but um i make sure that we we are we're able to scale, scale it whatever to their... we do okay that they you know uh, what, whatever we program so that they can do a version of it right like you know like some you know there's some days where we have handstand push-ups yeah and you'll have someone who has nothing close to a handstand push-up yeah but what you can do is say hey you know we're gonna have you do push-ups off your knees yeah instead of handstand push-ups and then once they get the um, competency and the strength to do that, hey, now you're going to do push-ups off your feet. Right. And then we're going to have you do, you know, push-ups. We're going to have you do uh, uh, push-ups with your feet on a box yeah. and so on. And, and just have them develop their, their strengths and their abilities mm -hmm. from there. Okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. So let's talk about when you just had recently everybody do their mile retest. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> Mile run. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So tell us how that came about. Yeah, well, um, the mile run. Um, some, um, I had a conversation with one of our members, Sam, and she Sam. wanted, and she wanted to <laughs> Samantha, Sam Samantha, Samantha, Samantha. <laughs> her. Uh, you have to call her Samantha now. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, not by her choice. <laughs> That's Samantha. So, and uh, she was very interested in um, running faster. She's like, you know, I've been running. You know, I never liked running, but now I do like running. But, you know, I'm, I want to be able to run faster. I'm like, well, just to run faster, you got to run faster. Yeah. And in order to run faster, you got to run short distances. So she's used to running, you know, mile, one miles, like three, uh, five Ks and uh, long distances. But if you want to get faster at your long distance, you got to practice doing running at shorter distances. That's 400 meter uh, sprints, um, 200 meter sprints. Uh, 100 meter sprints, even 50 meter sprints. And so we, after having the conversation with her, I'm like, hey, it's probably a good idea that we, we're going to um, have everybody do a one mile run. And then a month later, they're, we're going to do a one mile run again. But yeah. in between the two one mile runs for that month period, I'm going to have people do sprint work. So like, for instance, four rounds of 400 meter sprint rest two minutes. That means you. That one was the hardest. Yeah. So oh, yeah. do a, do a four hundred meter. Yeah. Do a four hundred meter run as fast as you can. Rest two minutes. And repeat that for a total of four yeah. times. And then and then like maybe two days later we'll have people do um, two hundred meters sprints, mm -hmm. and so on. And then maybe fifty meters. So we we I periodically program um, sprint work like one uh, two or three times a week for those four week periods, and uh, for that four week period. And I notice. At the end, when we retested the mile, mm -hmm. the people who uh, stuck, who actually did those sprints, yeah. they actually improved their, their mile time mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Hey, you had a that. significant yeah, mile. Yeah, I, I think yeah. mine, was, mine was like a minute and a half. I was able to running, I was running a minute and a half faster. Yeah, I think I Bino's was a lot too. Faster I think too. his was faster too. Mine yeah. wasn't because I didn't stick with the sprint work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Bino had like a seven minute, 30 second mile. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was like That's seven great. something. Yeah. yeah, it was something yeah. insane. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, Samantha uh, had a 14 second. That's mile. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Which is a big improvement for her. But she, she, I think she did like maybe half of the sprint work. Uh, sprint. Yeah. Part. So if she had done maybe all of it, yeah, she would have probably I mean, done yeah. a right, so that's, that's, bigger that's amount. That's the way to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They talk about that in the L1 manual mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Interval training. Yeah. Interval What's training. the next thing that you think that you can do that with? Like, Oh, you can do that with anything. So for instance, mm -hmm. you have a longer workout, let's say Filthy 50. Yeah. Or if you have a longer workout, let's say Murph. Oh, okay? oh Murph. Yeah. If you Surprise. take the same... Uh, take the same uh, <laughs> um, thinking with that. So a Murph takes about, let's, you know, a, a Murph is, is uh, basically what Murph is, is run one mile, then do 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air yeah. squats, and then run one mile. Mm -hmm. Most people, uh, the with, a time, yeah, with a weight with vest. With a weight vest. With a 20 pound weight vest. Okay. So um, most people who do that the first time, they take, it takes them about maybe 50 minutes, maybe an hour to do. Okay. So. It, we can t we can get faster on Murph by doing Murph, you know, maybe you know, periodically, like once a week or once every two weeks, whatever. Like full Murph month. or like just like calf, no, like you can. You that, that's one running. way of doing it. Just keep doing it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But I think a more efficient way of doing it would probably be doing like a half Murph or maybe a quarter Murph. Or gotcha. even practicing Cindy. You had Cindy. Yes, practicing. Yeah. Remember practicing the Cindy, yeah. um you 
you did a programming too where you started out with Cindy. Right. And then every single workout, well, not every single one, but every week there was a variation, variation of Cindy. So, yes. And then you retested our Cindy's again right. and everyone did again. So those, yeah. for those people who don't know what Cindy is, it's um, it's a, it's a, it's a, another benchmark workout where you do as many rounds as possible of five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and then 15 squats. All right. And you do that list over and over again uh, for uh, as many times as you can within 20 minutes. And that's a classic benchmark workout. And most, and I would say like the average number of rounds people get are around 14, 15 rounds on the average. On the high end, 21 rounds. Okay, on the low that's end. That's crazy. Yeah. On the low end, it's like <laughs> around 12 or 10. Uh, so, but yeah, so the same thing with Cindy. So yeah. um, if you want to get better at Cindy and get more rounds at Cindy, you just practice variations of Cindy, mm -hmm. maybe shorter sprints yeah. of Cindy. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get faster at something, do um, shorter versions of it. And because they're shorter, you can go a lot more intensely. You can go a lot faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get better. So like, for instance, uh, you guys, if you guys you know, want to get better at your longer style workouts, do very short, intense versions of those longer style workouts. They'll hurt more, but you know what? You're, you know, I'm just like you know, just like with the 200 meter sprints. Yeah. Those are those are intense. Those 200 are brutal. Meter sprints. I remember, yeah. one, I think somebody almost threw up. Actually, a couple of people threw up. I was gonna say, I think a couple of people threw up. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, that helps make you faster. Normally, doing those, small, doing those shorter. <laughs> <laughs> doing those shorter sprints help yeah. you, you know, get faster. I think the, the 400 one, the 400 meter one. I think on my last one, I almost puked. Like I yeah. was, yeah, because I was trying to keep up with Bino and he's like way faster than me now. So I was like trying to keep up with him and I'm like, I hate you. Mm. Like now I feel like I'm going to puke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was not good. Yeah. Not good. So tell us about what you two did yesterday. Mm. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, and how, uh, this, how this whole idea came to be, because this was your idea. Or no? It was my it was idea. Our, yeah. It was, 20, it was a 22 mile, 22.6 mile hike. Yes. Right, and yeah. so we basically walked from CrossFit Caliber to St. Andrew's Golf Course, and then from there, that's where the... Stupidly in the opposite direction to come back the opposite yeah, way. Yeah, well, somebody came up with the idea, we start from there. I don't know, I'm not exactly sure who it so was. The, well, first, the original plan was Arnell wanted to walk from Caliber to the city. Mm -hmm. He yeah, wanted right. to walk to the lakefront, mm -hmm. and so like... Down Irving Park Road. Here's the thing, Arnell's like, I have this great idea. Let's walk from Caliber to the city, and like, there was like nine or ten people who were like, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, no, absolutely not doing that. That's not happening. So he has this meeting with everybody who wants to do this walk. Mm -hmm. And I'm at the meeting because I was, we were working out and I just was waiting just for Bino because we be. drove together. I didn't want to be there. I wasn't mm -hmm. trying to do this walk. <laughs> and... So they started talking about the walk and then people started getting worried that it was going to be dangerous because, you know, down Irving Park Road, like there's no, there's not a ton of sidewalks yeah. and there's cars and there's some sketchy neighborhoods. And then so somebody was like, well, why don't we walk from here to this Great Western Trail and then walk the trail to the end of the trail? And yeah. that's essentially, if we do it this way, it's 22 miles. Mm -hmm. It's the same amount of miles from Caliber to the to downtown. Sure, yeah, approximately, right. Right. So. so then we took a vote, and we voted on doing the trail. I don't know why I voted, because, yeah. again, I wasn't doing this walk. And then Sam, was Samantha, your, uh, Samantha. <laughs> was like, come on, you should do it with the peer pressure, guys, first mm -hmm. of all. Because I was uh, not doing this you walk. Cannot, you, you cannot resist. Uh, <laughs> I can't. You cannot resist I am the, the worst. I'm easily influenced. If, if someone challenges you, you cannot resist. I'm not. No, I do. I will not turn down a challenge. Mm -hmm. So she was like, you can do this. Let's mm -hmm. go. We're going to do it. And I was like, fine. I'll do this. As long as the trail. Like, so I was like, the trail should be better. Because oh, yeah. I wasn't walking down or being. It wasn't no, happening. Yeah, yeah, right. Can you imagine walking down her? No, Park? after walking down 59 with all that traffic in, there was a huge semi that literally almost blew us off mm -hmm. the side yes. of the road. On 59. It was, like, and this guy like literally went out of his way to make sure that we saw him, like got as close to the curb as possible. Now, you know, 59, <laughs> there's no sidewalks. Yeah, he was, got as no close sidewalks. to this freaking side to say, hey, get out of my way, like. I was like, you're gonna kill us all. So yeah, we walked. Yeah, we walked from like from yeah. Caliber. We we took you know we took County Farm Road down to Stearns and Stern to 59, 59 up, and uh, 59. There were some sidewalks, but there's a lot of, a lot of places where they didn't have sidewalks, yeah. and so mm -hmm. like the only safe places to some 
to walk down was down the median. Down the median. We, we yeah. actually walked down. I have a picture. Of it. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. We down the median, uh, of, and we were walking down the. We median literally and, like and people eight of us like, walking down the median. And, and people at seven o'clock in the morning, people are driving by. We're like, wow, are these people in just like trouble? steering. Yeah. Are they in trouble? <laughs> what time they... did you guys start this? Yeah. At five we left the gym at five a.m. Yeah. 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 So, so anyway, yeah. So we did this walk, and yeah, it was all right. I mean. Was all right. Nine hour take. Nine hour walk. Nine hours, yeah. Nine, nine hour hours. So to do twenty one miles or twenty was twenty two point six. Twenty two point six miles. Um yeah. yeah, so the first like half I think was like awesome. Like we were like chatting and we having a great home. time there was like some points where we were like skipping and like jumping around like yeah, we, were, we were actually gonna pose in front of a house that said friends oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. we had a big sign in front of the house that said friends like hey guys yeah it's, hey. it was like 6 30 in the morning it was still dark out oh because they had a ring doorbell mm -hmm. and oh, their wow. sign said hey friends and i was like hey friends <laughs> And I'm like, we should take a picture yeah. in front of their ring. Because it says friends, you know. <laughs> it said, hey, friends. And friends. I was like, okay, friends. So, yeah. So then, yeah. So you're right, though. The first yeah. the first half of it, walking down Stearns and walking down 59. That was that was sort of fun. That walking was down fun. 59 yeah. was a little harrowing. Yeah. But, you know, but it was it was good. We, we made it. Yeah. Once we got to the trail, I feel like we kind of, like, started to slowly decline. Like, it just was, like, a very gradual, like, we we're good, and then we weren't, and then we weren't, and then we weren't. <laughs> and then it just kept getting worse, like with every mile. That was you. <laughs> <laughs> the truth comes out. No, if, no, I'm not even going to no, deny no, it because no, I really, no, no. it really was me. Well, I mean, no, because I think that's, from my point of view, I think that's when we came alive. Oh, I don't we're know. Just like, I felt like, like it got worse. We're just like, you know what? Hey, we're now on the trail. And now it's like a straight yeah. shot. We have nothing to worry about. We have this. Look at this. Tree, look at these trees. So nice. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we actually. Thought, I did ask you about the trees, and yes. you looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah, well, because at that time I couldn't tight. even think. Because I couldn't. <laughs> because think. I was just glad was to be some sitting really down. Pretty like views. Mm -hmm. Like um, there was some really <laughs> cool stuff. Like so, we saw that cemetery. Yes, it was a hidden cemetery. It was a hidden cemetery. Bill had a story about that. Yes. Bill, Bill had a story about that. Okay, so oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, he said when he was a kid, he lived in the area, and he said when he was a kid, him and his friends would go play like off the Great Western Trail and everything, and they went and they him and his friends came across like this cemetery in the middle middle of the woods. It was mm -hmm. like overgrown. There was like bushes and trees and just the weeds all over. You wouldn't you wouldn't know that you were in a cemetery until you like bumped into a, a headstone yeah. or something. And he said when him and his friends found it, they, was, they thought it was the creepiest thing. Like, yeah. wow. This it is didn't look a creepy. Pet yeah. cemetery from Stephen right. King. No, it, it looks like it's from, like a mini it was, veteran cemetery was a, or something. Uh, they had it marked off. It was a cemetery that was from 1872. I know what Stephen. I took St. a picture St. of Stephen. it. Yeah. St. Stephen Cemetery. Yeah. You know, and it was from 18, 1852. But since then, I guess they they um, they mowed the lawn, they cleaned all the, the foliage oh, and everything. So it's nice. really nice now. It's really so nice. So it's actually fenced look off. Look at that. Check it out. Yeah. Oh, look yeah. at that. So yeah, yeah they cleaned it. Looks, and so it's it like, like really pretty. It's small oh, yeah. too. It's small. It's about like it it's probably, is it's probably the size of uh, the, the, the floor the floor um, of this house basically. Yeah. And, and there's like, no like it doesn't even look like there's an entrance to get into mm -hmm. it. Like you're like, right. how do you even get in? Like who's Whose family members are buried here? Right. Because yeah. like, totally. how do they come visit their family? I'm talking like yeah. probably Civil War people. Yeah, you know, it's so, it was yeah. it was really cool to see yeah. though. Like it was. Fun. There was a lot of there was a lot of things that we could have stopped at and like really like you know explored and admired. But I'm like yeah. guys, we gotta keep going. We gotta yeah. keep going. Gotta so Megan going. and I drove to the brewery <laughs> there, where they ended theirs and um, got a table and <laughs> you know didn't participate at all except for getting the table for That's us right. to sit at. I know. Um, but <laughs> when we guys. when they walked in, you could tell that it had been a intense long walk. Like mm -hmm. like I said, I tried to ask like, oh, were the trees pretty? And Arnell was like, trees. Trees. Yeah. The other fine. And then and, you, like, and, then, and, then, and then you ask, then you, then you go to me. So was it everything you hoped for? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Everything I, hope for. I was so excited for them and they uh, weren't quite on the same level honestly like i feel like the last like four or five miles we were all like this is the stupidest thing we've ever done like this is the you like did. why are we doing you this did. is the dumbest thing that we've ever done in our like why and then i was like i will never ever 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 in my life walk this long mm -hmm. again like never. yeah well i'm now saying too that like you would try walking forwards and then eventually yeah. you would have to walk backwards yeah. just so yeah. it was a oh, different was, by movement. That, by the time yeah. we had like two or three hours left, everyone had pains everywhere. And people were cramping up oh, in different yeah. spots. I was cramping up my quads. Yeah. And I've done that before where I cramped up my quads where at the point where I can't bend, I couldn't bend my knees anymore. And I was yeah. scared that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So as yeah. soon as I started, 
you know, feeling like I was going to cramp, I took my water bottle out. Just drink water because that'll yeah. help alleviate the cramp. Yeah. And it, yeah. and it got to the point where, like, you know, walking forwards was, like, no longer uh, feasible. So no. you had, we had you to turn around, turn around and walk backwards. Yeah. And a lot of times that's what we did. We'd walk forward for, like, 10 minutes. And then when it, that got rough, then we turned turn around, around and walk for, like, yep. two, walk backward for two minutes. Yeah. And so it was like, in, and, it, it and the walking funny. backward felt so good. Compared like, to walking forward. When yeah. you were walking forward, you were literally like mm -hmm. trying to like lift your feet or like yeah. your feet were just dragging at yeah. one point. And then you would turn around and start walking backwards. And you were like, yeah, oh my God, this feels you're using, amazing. You're using different muscles yeah, basically. Yeah, it yeah. felt so much better. Mm -hmm. But it was. That was fun. I, th I thought I liked it. I did not. I know. So they took a vote afterwards and they, two people said that they would consider doing it again. Even who though else? they said, who they, said that? Me and I could, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Me and I could say, hey, well, you know what? No, we, I, would, I would do this again, but not with you. I'm going to be with you guys meeting them at the brewery. <laughs> <laughs> not within the next year. Yeah. You know, what we learned from last the last challenge we did uh, with the... 54 pound yeah. atlas stone mm -hmm. yeah. yeah when Bino, oh when we walked what it was actually all these all, people yeah. here mm -hmm. yeah right. we walked um 11 miles 11 yeah. miles, 11 miles. Elgin. Yeah. Yes. yeah but we were carrying the atlas stone which yeah. i know is only half of what you guys walked um, but still we had yeah, but still you know right. what i thought after well, while we were doing this well when they said it i was like okay so we're gonna walk the path it shouldn't be that bad we did 11 miles and it took us what like three hours i'm like so 22 take us like six six hours mm -hmm. but then i didn't realize how much we really needed to stop to stretch mm -hmm. or to go to the bathroom or to, to you eat. know eat like, well we were walking and eating yeah, at the we same time but walking. then like for us girls like it was harder for us to like drink as much because right. then we didn't want to go to the bathroom and like we went one time oh, in the you guys forest. did one, one time yeah, you guys one, one time in the fort i did bring toilet paper by the way <laughs> and yeah you guys you guys yeah. are really good about no that, we yeah. had like wipes and toilet paper and stuff but still it was like there was other people on the trail. It wasn't just us. So we weren't like trying to like let people like, mm -hmm. you know, and we didn't want to. So like as Samantha actually did not go at all while we were on the trail. Not one time. She went one time. No, not on the no, trail. She did on the trail. She did did she? Time. She did one time. Oh, I thought she didn't go. Wait, she was like, wait, wait, no, right. she didn't. She did at the gas station she, she went. She yeah. did it before we, so before we hit the trail, we stopped at a gas station and we all went there. Yes. And then we got on the trail and she's like, I'm not going in these woods because if I squat, I'm going to fall and there's going to be leaves. Oh, <laughs> she's like, I'm not trying to do it. She's like, no way. So, oh, um, gosh. There I was have a, lot. a funny story about that, but I'm going to hold that. I'm going to pause that story for later. <laughs> no, we'd like to hear it, Megan. Go ahead. Well, it's, I wasn't the one that did it, but um, we were snowboarding last year up in Montana and speaking about peeing in the forest. Um, the people that I was with, one of the other girls, she had to go to the bathroom and we had just gotten down the hill and I was like, well, there's a little forest area over here. Why don't we go over here? Okay. So we like put our snowboards up and we're trekking through the snow and we're behind some trees and we're, and we're peeing and then all of a sudden I hear, oh my God. <laughs> over and she had fallen in her own pee <laughs> and this oh and no I'm dying laughing and i'm like oh, I, just, I just i gotta finish real quick so i finish and then i go over and i'm just laughing at her she's still in the snow in her pee and i'm like what do you need me to do right now and she's like you just like help me get out and i was like oh. I can try. So I'm like <laughs> yanking her out of the snow. Like this is deep well, snow. It's in her pee. It's deep oh, snow. It's yeah. like waist deep snow. So I'm like, okay, like trying to lift her out of the snow. Oh, <laughs> so no. And of course, like she was like bare naked, you know, yeah. from the hips down. Yeah. So she could pee. Yeah. And it just oh, she was God. all cold from then on out. Yeah. So oh. falling in leaves. Would yeah. would it probably have been better, but I can I understand. Know. I don't know if any of that would have been good at all. But Not at because all. There were snakes. Yeah, I mean, and like <laughs> these were really wooded. Like there was a lot of like tough like things growing out of the ground. Yes, like I can't was. imagine Nine. having yeah yes yeah, having to fall in that Poison or something. Oak. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't blame her, but when, you know, at when I went, I had to go. And I was like, I, I'm not going to make it another five hours. Right. You got to go. go. I have yeah. to go. Like, yeah. there's no holding it. Yeah, we, right. yeah, I think we managed. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But you guys also lucked out that it was one of the nicer days. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. really good weather. Yes. We were very lucky. Yeah, we got It could have been worse. Though. It could have been raining. could have been yeah. wet. It could have been uh, Yeah. Windy. It was really cold in the morning when we left at, like, five. Really it was very cold. Like, you could see your breath. While you're walking, it was well, cold. Yeah, that's, that's 
It's cold mm-hmm. because it we're not cold. used to cold yet. We yeah. wouldn't be saying it was cold if it was like February right now. Mm-hmm. No, agreed. You know? Agreed. But, but yeah. since we haven't eased through yeah. a nice December and January yet, yeah. Yeah. it probably feels cold. Agreed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was cold. And then it was fine. And once the sun came out, <laughs> or no, it was like, it's fine. I don't know. I was cold. Yeah, yeah. But you, but you, I mean, you didn't have like frostbite or anything. No, right? no, no, no. At one point mm-hmm. I did. My toes were like so numb. I was like, oh, yeah. my, my toes my are toes, going to fall off. My toes off. were numb. Yeah. My hands were also, were, you know, cold yeah. too. Although Ankit could save my hands because he, he had like the hand warmer. Oh, nice. Ankit, Ankit. And he was like, I have hand warmers. Do you want them? I'm like, I'm not going to take your. He's like, no, my hands are warm now. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. He had he had everything. He had everything. Yeah. He literally, he's Ankit. like, I have Tylenol. If you guys need some Tylenol, I have, a, I have an ace bandage. I've got, he's like, I have everything. He, yeah. He literally did. He we had. Called him, we called him 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. That's everything. right. Seriously, I yeah, appreciate yeah. that. That's yeah, like me everything. going to Murph when I brought the speaker, right. whiteboard. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he had, no, seriously, he, he yeah. had a banana. He had Gatorade. Yeah, he had, he water had bottles, everything. He had snacks. Yeah. I mean, like, okay, you got some Slurpees in there, too? Because, yeah. you know, you got, right. you got, you're 7-Eleven. <laughs> he did. He did. And then he was like, I do. And I was like, don't play with me. Don't play <laughs> with me, Slurpee. Slurpee. That would have been great. Yeah. He, was, he was funny. Yeah. Mm. He, so um, speaking of challenges and kind of like special events that happen at Caliber, mm. all thanks to Arnell and his creative thinking and bringing the community together, especially during times when everybody else kind of feels – like, they really don't know what to do. Like, you know, everyone gets in that season of the year where they're like, oh, you know, they they need some kind of motivation. And you do that. Yeah. And now what it is that we're doing is. Oh, here in November. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about how November you came is, up with that? Oh, it's, you know, November, the, uh, Veterans Day is in November. And uh, I figure that, you know, instead of having just one day dedicated to, you know, honoring veterans, why don't we have a whole month? And so uh, I, thought, I thought, hey, you know, there's a whole bunch of hero workouts out there. And the hero workouts are very long CrossFit workouts, long, arduous, and painful. And they're meant to be that way because they're basically, uh, these hero workouts are dedicated to fallen heroes. Mm-hmm. The fallen um, uh, uh, veterans, like military or, uh, or uh, first responders who died in the uh, line of duty. And so, and if they happen to do CrossFit or if they're related to someone, uh, who does CrossFit? They, they dedicate. They make up a workout that's that and dedicated to them, and they're uh and they're long. They're arduous. They're tough. They make you just think about you know we think about why you want you started doing it in the first place. Yeah. But you know and when you when you do finish them you feel like a real big sense of accomplishment. Yeah. And so um so then uh, every Friday of November we we do we're gonna do well actually we already did one but. So every Friday in November, we're we're gonna do a hero workout, and um, and there's um, and those of us who are in the Hero November Challenge, um, if you complete all four workouts during the month of November, then you completed the the challenge and you get the Hero November T-shirt. And so I basically said, hey, you know, um, if you're gonna be in this challenge and you want to get the T-shirt at the end, you got to submit a thirty dollar fee, and that pays for the T-shirt. That's if you do finish all. The four workouts and the proceeds of whatever's left from um, the thirty dollars goes to the Wounded Warrior Foundation. So um, that's that's what we're doing. So we already did one workout, yeah. Rankle, on Friday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now we got three more to go. We got one coming up this Friday, and then the subsequent Fridays after that. That's when I'll be back at the gym after yesterday's walk. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <It's been Friday. laughs> yes. Just kidding. No, yeah. actually, I'm okay. I'm a lot better today than I was yeah. yesterday. You know, I I really I what I I found very interesting about how there were nine of us in that walk and i found yeah. really very interesting how we all reacted so differently yeah to mm-hmm. that workout and it really showed like um like uh you know just the i mean just like the age groups that uh, yeah acted, you know um uh, it's hard to explain but like i noticed that the, the young ones who had like were really gung-ho about it and like, yeah. yeah let's do it you know this is a good challenge and then when they are and they they were in there and they actually did it in the middle of it, they found out that hey, this might I might have bitten off but more than I could chew. chew. That's how, exactly yeah. what I thought yeah. when I was because right. I really actually Vino and I both went into it thinking like this is a cakewalk, like this is not going to be hard. It's mm-hmm. we're walking. Like how hard could yeah. it be to walk twenty one miles? Right. Like, right. We did it before in the summer. We walked eleven miles. It's not a big deal. Right. Yeah, right. I will never think that again. Yeah. Because. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? It's a very good. It's a very good learning experience. It is. You have it to was. admit. You have to admit that. Yeah. After doing this, you have become much stronger and wiser. Yeah. No, of, I do. I did yeah. feel really accomplished. Like when yes. I was done, I did feel like proud of myself because there were lots of moments where I was like, I 
can't do this right. anymore. Like I literally, like I was, I at one point looked at Bino, we were like way behind everybody else. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't walk anymore. Like I just can't do this. And I was like already like starting to like cry. Mm-hmm. Like I had tears in my eyes and I was like, stop it. Yeah, I suck it. Like I did. I, I was like, that. you suck it up. And I was like, <sighs> You're you know, fine. I, you're fine. There's, yeah. a lot of time, there's a lot of times I felt like I wanted to stop everyone and be like, hey, let's all get back together and yeah. stay in one group. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, you know what? If I did that, then we'd, we'd slow us down. Right. I yeah. would say, you know what? The people who want to keep going, they go. And yeah. the people who, you know, don't want to go as fast, they'll lag on behind people. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing is that, you know, if, if I would say my thinking was that if we just kept going, even though we were all like 100 meters apart from each other, yeah. we're still going to keep going. Right. Because, and I do feel like there was like moments where like, there were different people in the back and mm-hmm. the front. Like oh, yeah, there were times right. where I was in the front and there were times I was in the back. And then right. like, you know, it was just, we alternated. Like every, at one point somebody was in the back mm-hmm. because the time, it was yeah. just like, you know, you right. just had to move at your own pace at that point too. Right. Like, right. Right. I found the best way to deal with it was just not think about it and just keep your mind on something else. And yeah. like with me and I, I was basically walking with Ankit the whole time. Ankit and I were just basically knew that we were hurting. We would always say, oh, yeah. gosh, I'm starting to cramp here, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, you know, we just like, you know what, hey, let's just talk about something. We, yeah. we looked up the menu yeah. at the brewery. Like, we had something to look forward to. Yeah. Like, hey, you know what, they got this. They got this, what is cheese this? Cheese curds. This cheese curds. They oh, got Sam this kept talking about the goat cheese. The goat cheese. <laughs> like, I'm, 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 I'm in here for yeah. the goat cheese. So, yeah. yeah that's I do feel stuff. like every time I walked with Ankit, Oh. Like he just knew how to have a conversation with yes, you right. and it really did keep your mind off of what you were doing. Like you were just conversating and then by the time you knew it, like, like a half an hour, 45 right, minutes had exactly. passed and I was like, oh wow, we are already that, that far was because Samantha. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. anytime I would walk with those two, like honestly, Sam was with that for everybody. She was like, come on guys, we mm-hmm. can do this. You got she this. Like, don't worry yeah. about it. Like you can do it. Keep walking. Like, like there was that point when Mick, we saw Mickey, yeah, and I literally was <laughs> like two seconds away from getting in her car yeah. and like right. just being done. I was like, yeah. I'm done. I can't do that. And we had what like six miles left at mm-hmm. that point. Yes, yeah, did. and she's like, Sam's like, No, you have. We have six miles. You're <laughs> finishing this. Like, let's go. And I was like, yeah. But I don't want to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's great because, you know, all these um, challenges and special things that Arnell comes up with mm-hmm. get that bond, right? So yeah. the group that walked with each other now have this really great bond. Yeah, well, we have our trauma of the so, Fran challenge. I was just oh, going to say, Arnell had the That's Fran right. challenge at yeah. one point a few years ago oh, that gosh. I forcefully made Leanne sign up May for. May 2017. <laughs> Peer pressure, yeah, Leanne. Yeah, so. She just wrote my name on the, <laughs> the sign up. And I was like, um... Yep. I don't really want to do this. But yeah. with that being said, that goes back to when you were talking about how if you do the same thing over and over and yeah. over again, mm-hmm. obviously you're going to you're gonna get, get better, better at it. At it. Yeah. Right. But there, are, like that also gets irritating. Like we yeah. both, like it's been how many years oh, where we're just, both like, it grinds, it grinds, yeah. on, your, it, it grinds yeah. on your your psyche and you're like, right. and you just, you end up becoming, uh, developing an uh, adverse reaction to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with, with a workout like Fran. Yeah. Yes. Now right. you guys, you know, Fran, Fran is, uh, is, Basically, it's for time. You do 21 thrusters and 21 pull-ups. 15 thrusters, 15 pull-ups. Nine thrusters, nine pull-ups. Yep. Who wants to demonstrate a thruster? Because no. so some people don't know what a thruster <laughs> no. is. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead Megan. Thrust, thrust it up, Megan. Like, pretend like you have go a bar. Get it. Pretend you? like you have a bar. And, you know, and go get her a PVC pipe. <laughs> 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 or the broom. <laughs> well, I'm sure Norm will edit a video in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Norm, yeah. 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 demonstrating This is what a thruster is, guys. Yeah. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Ready to Watch, watch my mic. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Ooh, that was exhausting. Okay. But so. we did a we did a challenge where it was for five it was five Fridays of Fran. So yep. every Friday we came there at five thirty and we did Fran oh, every good. day. Mm-hmm. And Megan cut her Fran time in half mm-hmm. doing this. That's right. So yep. like you do see results, but it's also yeah. trauma, and I took off like I think well, two you know, minutes or something. Yeah, yeah. my friend. Yeah. I think th- th- with that is that you you end up realizing what you can do, what you can't do. Yeah. When you first do friend, you you know you're careful. You know, be like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm gonna pace it. I'm gonna go about this. Right. And then after you do it, like, hey, you know what? I could have I could have gone a little faster. Yeah. Maybe I could have spent a little less time resting. Yeah. At this point, and then the next time you do it, you do a little better because now you you're a little right. wiser. And right. the next time you do it, you, and as d- during those five weeks, you also do get a little stronger. Mm-hmm. You also have your cardio, cardiovascular capacity ends up getting better a little bit. Right. But most importantly, you learn from your mistakes in the previous right. times. Right, which I remember better. we would come in and talk about that. Yes. Like I remember one week I was like, 
after the pull-ups, I just like cruise around. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I need to what not, are you doing? Yeah. Like I need to start immediately doing thrusters. Right. So um, that like, and I remember I told Arnell that, and like you kept you like I remember you like, I'm like gave what me are a little you doing? Taskmaster. Pick it up. Yeah. What you're you like doing? okay, yeah. right to that. the pu- to the thrusters. Okay. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, kind of adding on into that, it's kind of like strategy, right? So mm-hmm. like you you learn each week like right. what kind of strategy that you're building up, and mm-hmm. I also think that is something that everyone kind of asks too, like right before the workout, we always ask Arnell, so what's the Arnell math here? Like yeah. what times and how many how many minutes should we be spending on each round? Right. And um, so I think strategy is also like a key factor in doing all these workouts yeah. too, especially yeah. now that we have Hero November, mm-hmm. you know, like this is now a good time to kind of work our mental strategy game. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Yeah, it's almost like when you have to strategize for the open, like when you're waiting for that workout on Thursday and you don't know what it is because like Arnell's not telling us what workout we're doing on that Friday. So then like once we find out, then we're like, okay, what's our what's going to be your strategy for this workout? So like this workout happened to be the day before the walk. Mm-hmm. So he had like three variations of the workout and I was like, well, I'm doing level one because mm-hmm. if I do level, if I try to even do level three, like... I'm going to hurt myself like or like I'm not going to be able to walk. Very scaled down right. version of the workout. Mm-hmm. Right. And I did feel like level one was the perfect level. Yeah. Like I could have done level two and I possibly could have done level three. But um, level one was perfect for me because I was able to keep moving. Mm-hmm. Like I was right. able to just nonstop move. Like everything was unbroken and I was fine. I was able to keep going. And as, actually, I, I feel like if I did it again at level one, I could have done better. Like yeah, I feel like yeah. I didn't push myself as hard because I knew I had the walk the next right. day. Mm-hmm. But had I been like not had to do that, I feel like I could have done like a ton better. Right. So I do actually want to do that one over again. Like I want to do that workout. I liked sure. that one. It was, was a, a good, good workout. It was, yeah. it was a good one. It's good. Yeah. 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 I would love great. to do that again. It has, yeah. it has a good range of like everything. I had weightlifting, uh, gymnastics movements, and cardio. Yeah. yeah. All in once. Love the yeah. cardio. It was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that it was only 200 meters. 200 meters. <laughs> I was like, any, any time a workout has 400 meters, I'm like, oh. Yeah. But 200, I'm like, good, because it's like one time. One time around the building, we're good. We're golden. Right, right, right. right. So, but yeah, I do love like the little challenges that you always have for us. I do feel like it's an awesome for like building our community. Like they said, like it's, we are probably like one of the tighter knit crossfit boxes that you will see because like we have like like we don't just hang out at the gym like we don't just like work out together like we hang out like we do things like megan and i play softball together outside of the gym and like leanne and megan do things and like there are other people i (laughs) mean (laughs) yeah tacos and burritos yeah and then like we just like everybody has like you know we do different things with different people at the gym and i feel like the community is really honestly what keeps me Mm-hmm. at caliber because i mean if what's so funny is like when Bean and i talk about moving and i'm like well you know we need to stay near caliber right like exactly so yeah, if that's... we move anywhere like we have to stay close because yeah. it's our i'm family. not yeah, right it, it is, is. It, it, is. It, it honestly is. is and like i feel like i see you guys more than i do see like some of my family mm-hmm. because you know and we see the worst parts of each other sometimes you know working oh, out at the gym and i think that's what you know, makes us mash well together too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Communities yeah. are so important, especially if you're trying to build your health and fitness. Yeah. Because a lot of times when you're trying to do this on your own, um, not, it's not only just not knowing what to do, but it's also being motivated to do yeah. what you're supposed to do. Absolutely. And that, and that, that's the thing. You need, you need, to, uh, you need to be held accountable. Like yeah. People mm-hmm. who are doing the same thing you are doing, they're trying to get healthy, they're yeah. trying to get more fit. And... Um, you, if you feel like you feel like in order to in order to uh, stay with this peop with this group of people, you have to do the same thing. Yeah, and everything. And these people also give you positive feedback. They also give you advice on what that's you need to more do. what it is yeah. too is the positive feedback. Because right. like even like Megan Lee and I are nowhere near on the same level and CrossFit. Like I'm not. I'm meaning me, not to them. And so like, but when I work out and I have them like cheering me on and like, you got this, you can do this. Like, you know, just keep going. Like the motivation that they give me in general is really like what matters. Cause I wouldn't like, if I went to a gym where we didn't have that, Mm -hmm. I would not stay there. I wouldn't be there. And it's it's sad because there's a lot of gyms that are like that where people go there and they hardly know anybody else. They do the workout and then they don't stick around. No, they don't socialize. They just go home. 
Yeah. And that's like the, the, the bigger gyms, especially the, the gyms yeah. in, in the city where there's a lot of people who don't know right. each other. And what yeah. they and that and a lot of people want, want that. They want yeah. to go to a gym where they can just do their, just workout, do their workout and then go home. Yeah. yeah. Weren't you saying that you went to a gym when you went out of town one time and it mm-hmm. was like they were like, it, we don't conversate here, just get your workout done and Yeah, they right. told me that they are commuter gyms. So they were yeah. located right off the highway mm-hmm. and there's a lot of commuters that go from the city to the suburbs there. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Oh, we don't hang out, we mm-hmm. don't really talk before and after class, like we come, we get our workout, yeah. and we leave because people are right. commuting. Like, yeah. this is just a right. stop on their way right. to wherever. And I was like, yeah. oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's well, a lot of people like that. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people like nice that. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. But you know, um, I, they don't understand our two-hour conversation <laughs> right. that we need after <laughs> we work out at 5.30 in the morning. Right. Like, it's so funny because when I first started and I would see like, you know, everybody like hanging out after and I was like, that's so weird. And like so now, <laughs> now I do it so much. And then like, I'll get home and Bino's like, where were you? I was like, Don't where do it. you think I was? I was <laughs> at the gym. gym. And he's like, for two hours? He's like, class ended like two hours ago. I'm like, I'm aware. <laughs> like, well, I don't I know. To, back in the day when I went to, when Dewey was our roommate and we would drive in the morning there together, we had to leave much quicker because mm-hmm. he had to, for real, get to work. Get to work. For real, yeah. get to work. Yeah. <laughs> Where? Right. You know. I remember. Yeah. I remember when you yeah. first started, you did not, you didn't socialize. No. Where it was. We had parties and everything. You weren't yeah. part of that. It took you months, mm-hmm. yeah. actually. It did. And why was that? Why was that? Mm-hmm. Just gotta make sure it's make sure it was a right fit for I you. Think, I think you were testing you were testing the waters. You were yeah. just getting a feel. Yeah, I mean, and it was different then. Like mm-hmm. you know, for me, I didn't come nearly as much as I came now. No, like right. I, I was um, like three times, think, two or three times a week. Yeah, yeah. I came on <laughs> Wednesdays and Fridays and Saturdays, mm-hmm. and that was it. And mm-hmm. um, I played a lot of soccer still, yeah. so I I was doing more of that, and I had my, you know, my other people I was hanging out with more, and then. We started to get, you know, more friends at Caliber, mainly the 5.30 a.m. people. Because yeah. when you come at 5.30 a.m., you don't know the other people except for on Saturday. Right, right. yeah. Right. And on so, Saturday, that's when yeah. all the classes when come together. When everybody comes together. Right. And Saturdays can be, you know, it can be hard, especially if you don't know anybody and everybody else knows everybody. Right. So that takes a minute to yeah. get used to because a lot of 5.30 a.m. people don't come to Saturday. That's yeah. Right. yeah. You know, because they're busy with... I do remember when we first started and I would started coming at 5.30 a.m., I think I went to a class because I wasn't going on Saturdays. And I went to a class at like 5.30 p.m. and I walked in and everybody was like, who the hell are you? Mm -hmm. Like looking at me, I'm like, I'm so uncomfortable. Uh. (laughs) I want to go back to my people. (laughs) I think, um, you know, like also back to what you were saying about the 9 o'clock classes on Saturday – um yes it is full of people yeah. that if you don't if you don't go to like a 5 30 a.m class and so all of a sudden you see a 5 30 a.m or at the nine o'clock class you're you're just like oh who is this who person? is that person <laughs> but at the same time i also think that caliber the people there in general have a um they're just very good at welcoming like yes. new new members yes. and new faces because i mean i know for a fact leanne like she goes and she ventures and she's like oh so how are you doing because everyone's been in that boat before yeah right yeah, like right. everybody's been new right. and yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so right. um i think caliber does a great job at that and, i agree you know, inviting and welcoming new people that are probably like trying yeah. it out or drop-ins yeah or, Sometimes our drop-ins get in the mix of our crazies. <laughs> <laughs> our shenanigans. Our shenanigans. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's always a good time. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a few times where Megan and I, we have um, been getting ready for a competition, and we didn't have necessarily the um, equipment necessary <laughs> that would, we knew we was going to be in the workout. Yeah, it was going to be a sled push, right? A, a sled, sled drag. Sled drag? Yeah, yeah, so Arnell fashioned a GHD and right. a sled drag. <laughs> a rope into a GHD machine for us. And the, I feel like this drop-in was just looking at us like, what am I looking yeah, at? We had, yeah, we had a visitor from um, Michigan, and he was a doctor, mm-hmm. and he uh, brought his daughter to some cheerleading competition at the Sears Center at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's called the Now Center, but it's called the Sears I, Center. I don't know. And so, Wait, they changed the time, it? Yeah, they changed it. It was mm-hmm. the Sears Center at the oh time. My, so why he are dropped, they always changing the he name? He dropped his daughter off there, and he's like, and he's a CrossFitter, and he's like, hey, while she's doing her thing over there in a competition for like four hours, I need, I can work out. Yeah. So he Googled, and he found us, he's like, and he just called me out of the blue, like, hey, can I come to your open gym and do my workout there? I CrossFit for three years, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, sure, come on over. So it was him, and then Leanne and Megan. 
<laughs> and that's when they were preparing. It was in the middle of April, and they were preparing for this competition. Wait, was that when you guys did the the thing with the bars too? No, that was different. That was that was last year, at September. September. <laughs> that, was that wasn't for that a competition. Was, that was I was just, like, that was that just was different just for, shenanigans. That was just for fun. <laughs> was you mean right. when we build our car? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that so, was between the open and the quarterfinals. We were like, we need some fun. So, but sorry. So yeah. So this. So yeah. Then. You guys had to practice sled drag. We didn't have a sled. So I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? Hey, let's take this GHD machine. We're going to hook up a rope to it so you can pull it or you can drag it or whatever. And, and we tried it in, in, inside, but the, you know, the, the rubber mats were just slowing it down. So outside, <laughs> yeah, while outside, Arnell is on the GHD going yeah. to me. Oh, and I'm like, oh, I can't pull so, it. Yeah, but you did it, though. I remember you did it. You did it. So then uh, we moved it outside. And it was in the middle of April, I remember, because there was a snowstorm. Yeah, and we put it outside, and then we dragged it out. We're going back and forth, and it was and it slid very well outside. With but it the made snow this going. horrid noise. Yes, it was, like, it was a very, <laughs> very like grating noise. It was worse than fingernails and a chocolate. Yeah. I remember. And this guy who was you know, this drop-in guy who's a doctor, and you know he's doing his own thing. He's doing back heavy back squats, looking at us like, "Wow, like, you guys, what's are, going on you guys are having now? fun." He's like smiling, like, "Ha ha ha, these yeah. guys are." Freaking weird. <laughs> yeah. And then we haven't seen him since. Yeah, we haven't seen him since. <laughs> right. Must be I'm no sure more cheerleading chapter. He's got more he's got fond memories of it. Yeah, we, we swear we work out. We just we had some yeah. technical yeah. difficulties with uh Right. You but guys it, just have a good time. The yeah. whole point of that was it was still nice though, because even, you know, if you know that people are preparing for a competition or they're try- they have a certain goal in mind you do go out of your way to help us like, yeah mm-hmm. you know yeah, it, it figure sense, it out right? so we yeah, all appreciate that and we'll i think that helps build do. the community too there yeah, yeah for i sure. think that's that's the, the most and i think that's originally that's what crossfit was all about mm-hmm. small communities yeah of people just supporting each other and helping each other and that's what you need i mean you, you, you if you have other people who start you know looking down on you or making fun of you because you yeah, can't do a no. pull up or you can't do another. Yeah. That's just, that's not what CrossFit is about. Yeah. I mean, anytime we, anyth- anytime we any- had people like that, and I, we've had a couple of people like that. I made sure that they didn't last. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel like anybody at Caliber mm-hmm. and we pretty much know everybody now. Mm-hmm. Um, even like, you know, in the classes that we don't go to, but mm-hmm. um, I don't feel like we have any negative people at Caliber. Like I feel like everybody is super positive, super uplifting and, you know, always encouraging everybody no matter what, like in every class. And I think that that's honestly like the best part of our gym. Yeah. And I think that's the best part of, like, you know, you created that. Like, you yeah. made sure that, like, our gym was a positive atmosphere yeah. for everybody. And a safe atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely safe. safe yeah. Yeah, definitely safe. <laughs> definitely. Safety is very important. Safety. <laughs> very important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the walk right now, like, who's got weapons? Everybody, have you guys, are you guys good? And we're like, Seriously. I'm like, wait, what? I need to know we were who, supposed to bring I, weapons? I, I didn't need, know we were supposed to do that. I need to, to know who, 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 who was who, prepared. I need to know who, who, did, who knew CPR. Yes, who had, he did. He did ask aid, who. Yeah. Who had first aid yeah. kits? And I also <laughs> wanted to know who here has weapons. Yeah. Just in case we you know, we had you know unsavory. Yeah, LD was so funny. She's got, <laughs> she was like, I got pepper spray. Yeah, I, got I got my knife. knife I, got I, got I got this. Knife. I got that. I was like, Chris, oh, yeah, okay. So you're yeah. all prepared. I, mean, like, for all I got of us. chapstick. <laughs> <laughs> I I was like, I have nothing. Yeah, I have a peanut yeah, butter right. sandwich in my bag. <laughs> Blind you. If, unless you're allergic to peanuts, then I'm, <laughs> there's I'm no help that's right now. That's the weapon right there. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, safety and uh, just camaraderie. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. safety and camaraderie. <laughs> that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what matters, yeah. though, you know? Like I said, like, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't be there if it wasn't the way that it is. Yeah, you know? I think so, too. Yeah, I mean, I've been coming there eight years. That's what Ankit said. And, yeah. yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of people come and go. And oh, there's yeah. some people, you know? Yeah, <laughs> just, I, know. I know exactly what you. They mean. were like, "Oh, it was probably good for you to go." Yeah, yeah there was yeah. a time. There was a time. There was a lot of tension. Yeah, at, at the gym, and that ended up weeding itself out. Yeah, yeah. and, and that's not, probably okay. not comfortable either for mm-hmm. anybody. That's no. right. So yeah, so. I mean, you see a lot of people come and go, and good ones stay, and you know some good yeah. ones have to leave too, and that's a shame. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. but you know, it's been a good experience yeah. so far. Yeah. So, yeah, awesome. I don't intend on leaving anytime. Yeah, so. I don't either. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope not. I hope not. You guys, you guys, you guys, I don't know. 
Is Gianna going to carry it on you, for you, you know, when that's you what get older? We were talking about that, actually, because Gianna wants, she says she wants to take over the gym someday. Wow. Oh, so that's awesome. she says, she said that um, when she graduates high school, she's going to go, go into college and she's going to, uh, may, uh, she's, her, her, She's going to study uh, business administration, mm -hmm. number one, with uh, exercise phy physiology. Mm -hmm. as that's a, awesome. As a, as a double major, basically. Very so a double cool. major. I'm like, that's a good idea. Where'd you get that idea from? And she didn't say, but I don't know. Whatever. That's very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. We do have some pretty amazing CrossFit kids right now. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll be... Jace. Jace. Yeah, Jace is... Jace is up and coming. Jace. Yes. Is. We're going to see Jace at the games one day. We yeah, will, for sure. Probably, yeah. like, really soon. He's Jace, only 14. You know what? He's got the yeah. name for it. Jace Wolf. Yes. That sounds nice. Yes. Jace Wolf. He's going to wolf you. Oh. Okay. He's going to take you out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jace. Oh, poor Jace. He's going to be so embarrassed when he sees He's like, oh my God, you guys, stop it. No uh, wolfing. Yeah. Yes, anyway. Anyways, yeah, we have a lot of good CrossFit kids right now. We I do. think that, like, we have a great generation. Yes. Honestly, like, you know, and I talk about it all the time, like, how I wish I had found CrossFit, like, much sooner yes, in my me life. Too. Yep. I mean, we've talked about this on previous episodes, too. Yeah. Um, but, like, Looking at like my kids too, who are just recently got into it, and like mm -hmm. how much better they right. are, and yes. you know, like just you know, in their lives, like Mateo, just like he just carries himself in a different manner. Mm -hmm. Like he like stands up straighter. Like he used to walk literally like yeah. hunched over all the time. Like you know, wherever mm -hmm. he went, he was like literally like leaning into his walk, and now he like walks with like a more like stand up straight, shoulders back. Yeah. Like he's got a better like stance to himself. But I just feel like. For the kids, it's so much better, especially the kids who are like always gaming and yeah. like on their right. phones oh, yeah, and stuff. Like, I yeah. gave him homework for while gaming, you, and he did, and Mateo and he did it, and he did, and he was like, oh, Leanne is gonna be so excited because I did my homework, and she's just wait till she sees my squats, like they, and they did, and they got so much better, mm -hmm. and like he does, like honestly, when he was taking your guys' classes, like he would always be like wait till Megan sees this or wait till Leanne sees this or wait till, you know, like he would get so excited about it. And I've never seen Mateo excited about working out mm -hmm. ever in his wow, life. Like yeah. he's like, yeah. that's, that, that's really great. The best part is that when he goes to school, he does like a weightlifting class right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like he challenges all the kids in his weightlifting class to mm -hmm. do like CrossFit workouts. Ooh. And because they always talk crap to him because they're like, oh, CrossFit, well, like CrossFit sucks. And he's like, okay, so I'm going to challenge you. And this is the woman's weight, by the way. <laughs> so do the woman's weight and then, you know, whatever. And then they can't do it. Yeah. And he's like, keep talking crap to me. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. So I think right. it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Was that so, our whole? Uh, I think yeah. Agenda. Think so. Any parting Great. words for us? Of yeah. Words. Any part? Yeah. Any advice for those non-crossfitters out there that maybe are thinking about doing CrossFit but like are on the fence? Yeah, I get a lot of questions. I sit. They ask me, "Oh, do I need to be in any special shape before starting CrossFit? No. What do you have no. to say yeah. to that?" You don't have to be. A lot of people have the misconception that you have to be fit in order to do CrossFit. Which is not true. You can come into CrossFit in any um, fitness level that you're at right now or any physical ability or if you have no ability at all. You're going to start out slow. <laughs> We're going to scale the workouts for mm -hmm. you so that you can do it to your ability. You can keep going. You can develop cardiovascular ability, strength, and stamina. And eventually, if you keep going at it and you keep doing it you know, and you're consistent about it, it may take a year, it may take a couple of years, but you're going to end up doing things that you've never thought you could do. Yeah. And you'll be so amazed by, yeah. you know, what, and you're going to be so proud of yourself. And it just, and it's just, it, it, it changes your life, as you guys. Agreed. Yes. Can, yeah. can, can attest to mm -hmm. it. I changed my life. I mean, I, I, quit, I quit my profession as an attorney in order to be a gym owner. It's because it has changed my life. Well, we changed all of ours. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. And so, Full circle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's... um. It's definitely something. It's it's just something you got to try. Yeah. You just got to try. That's all. Give it a chance. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. Go back, you know, do, go and do something else, which is fine. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. give it a try, though. That's there it. you have it. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about it, let us know. CrossFit Caliber, Streamwood, we are here with Welcome Open Arms if you want to try it out. Or if you're not in the area, you can go literally anywhere i'm sure there's a crossfit yeah. gym in your area there's a crossfit gym google Definitely. it and the good the thing about crossfit gyms guys is that you have to you know try out all the gyms in your area yeah because each crossfit gym is so different from mm -hmm. the other 
because yes. each CrossFit gym is individually owned. Yeah. So it's not like a franchise mm-hmm. where the big corporate headquarters tells you exactly how to do how how, how to do things. Yeah. No. So every CrossFit gym they take the CrossFit methodology and and they uh, interpret it and they apply it what they think it should be. So, mm-hmm. and and it's different with community, different with the programming, with the, the type of people that attend there. So yeah. you go to different gyms. Every gym will give you at least one free class to try. Yeah. So give that try that it gym, out. Give that give that gym at least one chance. And if, if you don't like it, you can even walk out during the middle of class if you want to. It doesn't matter. You yeah. Know? yeah, seriously. I've, had, I've actually had people do that. Yeah. They walk out. because If it's they, not they for you, it's not for you. Not for you. Right. Yeah. But, you know, give it a try. And if you like it, you like it, stick around. If you don't, move, go move on yeah. to the next gym. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks, Arnell, yes, thank for you being here. Thank you guys we appreciate for having you. Me. This is awesome. Yes. I loved it. Enjoyed you yeah. guys. Uh, company and uh, conversation was was really good. I'm yeah. sure we'll have you on again for that special programming. Special <laughs> programming <laughs> session. Telling yeah, after we get oh, our yeah. little session, you can uh, <laughs> the spreadsheet. So, the spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. So before we um, sign off, Arnell, give us the website for Caliber, so that you know if people are interested, they can go to your website and or if you want to give a number yeah, for them sure. to call as well. CrossFitCaliber.com. CrossFitCaliber.com and. Uh, um, the number is 847-224-1454. Yeah. So if you want to like come hang out with us cool people, <laughs> let us know. Have fun. You guys are going to have a lot of fun. Seriously. <laughs> come check us out. You're going to have a lot of fun. I guarantee yeah. you. You're going to have a lot of fun. Honestly, if you even just like drop in, like just drop in for a class. Like, Seriously. It'll yeah. be so much fun. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff, guys. Yeah. So thanks. Thank uh, you guys. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching or listening, whatever you're doing. Um, thanks for your support. We love you. And- Ha, 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 ha.